Hi, this is John Orberg, and we're becoming new. We're actually about to start a journey together in this new year towards being renewed from the inside out, walking together with our friend Dallas Willard through a wonderful book, Renovation of the Heart, about how is it that God actually renews, makes new, changes us from within our will and our thoughts and our feelings and then our bodies and our habits and our relationships. And that's going to be fabulous, but it's got to wait until tomorrow because today, as you probably know, if you're watching this in the States, uh, this is a day that we remember the birth and the life and the message of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So I thought this would be an appropriate day as we're thinking about justice and why does God care so much about justice? Things like human rights be a really good day to remember uh, the passing of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. As a lot of you will know, he was an Archbishop in the Anglican Church at the forefront of the fight there against apartheid and for the rights of everybody. And he passed away just a few weeks ago on December 26th, the day after Christmas this last year. So I want to say a little bit about his life and his message. He grew up in great poverty. He was born in 1931. He was very, very bright and initially wanted to become a doctor but was not able to do that for financial reasons. And so he went into teaching and then he actually ended up resigning from that post as an act of protest against the lowering of standards for black education. And over time felt the call of God on his life to go into the ministry and became a priest and eventually a bishop and then an archbishop in the Anglican Church. I was talking to Jonathan Reckford Quite recently, Jonathan is with Habitat for Humanity, and so because of the work that they do, he had an opportunity to meet Archbishop Tutu on a number of occasions, and the quality in his life that Jonathan was most struck by was the quality of joy. And I had the chance to meet him only once several decades ago, but I have to say there was that same note. Uh, Bishop Tutu was famous for sometimes when he would be preaching, and he was brilliant, he had a brilliant mind, a brilliant education, but sometimes he would be so filled with joy, he would go into what were called pixie-like dances. I have never done that yet when I was preaching. And sometimes go out and embrace people who were in the congregation. And somehow in him, this passionate uh, spirit of defiance and protest against injustice and outrageous joy at loving God and loving people were deeply wed. When I heard him speak in California several decades ago, he was talking about the sin of discrimination and prejudice. And part of what he said to that little group when we were able to meet with him afterwards was that the problem with discrimination is not just that it's wrong, it's not just that it's unjust. He said, for the Christian who believes that God has placed his image in every single human being, whatever their color, whatever their status, to discriminate is to blaspheme against the image of God in that person. I am actually blaspheming God when I fail to see the worth and dignity and the love that God has placed on another human being. And I've never forgotten that message from him. Early on, when he was describing the acts of injustice that took place in South Africa, he had this remarkable um, uh, narrative for it. He said, for those of us who were black, initially the whites came and we had the land and they had the Bible. And then they said, let us pray. And we closed our eyes. And when we opened our eyes, they had the land and we had the Bible. And then this remarkable statement, and I think perhaps we got the better of the deal. Land matters, material well-being matters, and to take or oppress other people on that basis is always wrong, but actually it is the spirit that matters the most, and it's precisely because the spirit of humanity matters so much that oppression against humanity is such a wrong thing. And that statement, I think we may have gotten the better of the deal. Uh, if one were to choose between material well-being and the feeding of the spirit and the elevation of the soul, always choose. This is a remarkable statement. And that's part of the message that Archbishop Tutu proclaimed. One time 
in, I think it was 1988, when the struggle against apartheid was nearing its peak, but it was still the law of the land. There was a gathering of many thousands of people, and because it was a very sensitive moment, it was banned from taking place where it was initially supposed to happen. And so it became kind of an underground meeting, but with thousands of folks there. And then Bishop Tutu spoke at it. And there were many, many officials representing the government who were there. And at one point he began to speak to them. And he said, you know, to oppress people because of the color of their skin is wrong. It is unchristian. It is from the devil. It is destined for the ash heap of history. You are going to lose. And therefore, and you wait then for the words of condemnation that would be likely to come from somebody protesting that kind of wrongdoing. But instead, he began to dance, his pixie-like dance, and he began to jump up and down. And he said, but therefore, 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 we invite you to join the winning team. Freedom is coming. Justice and goodness and compassion and love must prevail. Freedom is breaking out. And that conviction that we live by hope, and hope is not just optimism that things will work out well, it is the conviction that there is meaning, that as Dr. King used to say, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Therefore, 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 we invite you to join the winning team. And he eventually became the head of the committees on truth and reconciliation. It's this remarkable man who said that uh, a wound must be opened before it can be cleansed. Truth must be named so that peace can rest on a solid foundation. And then um, uh, the offer of uh, forgiveness was given, but on the basis of an honest account of the crimes committed and the wrongs that were done. Just a remarkable life that we remember and celebrate today as we think about justice. So as you walk through this day, every human being that you see, remember there is one who bears the image of God. And pray, oh God, oh God, oh God, would you send your justice into this world? And then I wanna invite you, if you'd like to take one step of action today, uh, I wanna let you know about uh, an area of um, very, very painful need. As you might know, my wife Nancy works with churches and faith leaders in California, in the Bay Area, in the region around it. And in their Hispanic pastoral network yesterday came the word that um, uh, a horrible tragedy has taken place. And there is a pastor uh, who lost all three of his children. And uh, details are sketchy and not talked about a lot, but apparently it was a situation of a parent uh, uh, taking the lives of their child and then an attempted suicide. And um, the pictures of those little children, they were all very young, are just unspeakably wrenching. And now there is a pastor, a man, uh, who was the victim of that and has to try to find a way to live. And so a group of folks uh, have started a movement on GoFundMe. It's called Ortiz's Angels, Ortiz's Angels. And if you want to go on GoFundMe, Nancy and I have done that uh, to try to help with the funeral expenses and some way for this man, this pastor, who serves an under-resourced congregation in an under-resourced community, to find a way to move forward with life. And if you want to be a part of it, I know that that would mean a lot to him. I don't, I don't think I've done something like this before, but this is a really unusual situation and wanted to let you know. We live in a world of unspeakable heartbreak. And we live not with optimism, but with hope. That the image of God is in every human being. And therefore God is at work that those little lives are now present and precious before God. I love you. See you tomorrow.